Hey everyone. So when Zach asked me to come talk, I wanted to come up with something that was somewhere between tech and art because a lot of what I do is closer to art but somewhere in the middle. Um, so mock-ups are more than websites. I want to talk about how visualization is an important part of the creative process and kind of tie that back into what I do every day. So my name is Zach. Uh, I have a self-employed business owner, Gumption Design Company. I do graphic design, illustration, some website design. I am not a coder by any means. Um, so I wanted to kind of bring the opposite and more abstract part of the creative process and kind of present that to you guys. So visualization. Visualization is an important part of the creative process because you're coming up with ideas and what I found in my job is that when I'm, as a graphic designer, I'm coming to people, a lot of times they are not only looking for a logo or branding or illustration, but they're also looking for their art ideas to come to life. And that is a hard thing to help people come to by themselves without um, coming into emotions and some of the other pieces of life that come up. Um, and it's also just an important part of life to help internalize and externalize ideas. So I think that's something that I really like bringing uh, to the creative process. So an example of that, uh, in every day, sometimes some, a brand or a company will come to me and we're talking about how do we make their brand come to life? Or what does their logo look like? Uh, so usually we sit down and we have a big talk about uh, some of the roles of their company, what their future they want to look like, um, some of the commitments that they want to communicate to their customers, and things like that. Um, I've also had conversations with people during these where they aren't really sure what they want from it, but they know that their brand needs something new. And so part of the process is also helping them discover the solutions to their company. Um, so for instance, I did some consulting for an agency that kind of is all over the place. They come out of Switzerland, I think. And what they do is they bring in uh, visualizers, is what they call us, or illustrators. And then they help people come to a conclusion about problems that are happening in a workplace. So a lot of times it's communication issues or um, integration of companies, so a company buys another company and they want to bring them in, but they're having issues with communication. And so they do a bunch of studies and kind of come out with all of this information, and then they bring in key decision makers and want to help them come up with an idea to problem solve and come up with something really concrete to deliver to them. Uh, so the illustrators come in and we essentially just talk with them and kind of probe ideas out of them and help them draw it up on a whiteboard and get a presentation in, uh, in the works. So this really helps them come to terms with like what problems are actually happening in the workplace and then see it like for real with the people they're talking to and then also visualize a solution. So we usually come back with, so this is a 24 hour event. So we come in in the morning, we talk through these and then at night, me and the other illustrators come up with a presentation from their information. And then the next day, we go through it together and kind of discover uh, what their solution was. And it really integrates this process of coming up with an idea and creating a solution. And it helps them feel like they're part of that process too. And then the other part of that is not just coming up with an idea, but actualizing the idea and making it real to them. So that is, in my job, that's usually helping them carry out their brand or marketing, uh, helping them with strategy, making sure that you know, their logo isn't in the wrong place, and making sure that their website is actually working, and all of those great things. Um, but it also means helping them talk about their brand in a way that makes them feel like they're connected to it. A lot of small business owners especially, making them accurately describe what their business is and things like that really helps them. So an example of this uh, in my work is doing brand guides and walking through with companies. So usually there's 
a visual aspect to a brand guide where you're telling them how to use a logo, the visual imagery that you want to use. So with this, they already had some visual imagery, and it was just telling them in the future, if we're using a photographer, what kind of imagery are we looking for? We want to make sure it's professional. It's showing people that they're smiling, because people connect with smiling faces. So it's bringing that empathy into it. And then kind of brass tacks kind of things like what design elements in your website need to be there to make sure that people are interacting with it. And then I think the crossover between visualization and actualization is really where the magic starts to happen, whether it's in a professional setting or at home and in your own lives. I think that's a really powerful part of the creative process. So a little bit about my process. Usually I start with ideation. So this is usually sitting down with a client and developing the ideas without any kind of preconceived notions. Uh, a lot of times people come and there's a common term with artists is like blank page anxiety. So looking at a blank page and not knowing what to do with it. And ideation is about getting over that and saying any idea here is valid. It doesn't matter. Don't think about I, the constraints of a project, how much it's going to cost, anything like that. Because you want the problem solving to be able to be big enough to solve the whole problem before you start narrowing it in. Um, during this time period, I usually do a lot of research. So if it's for branding, it's looking at competition, um, looking at colors that might work, um, looking at their local area that they're in to make sure that certain types of brands might not work well in certain areas. So for instance, um, Lancaster, I feel like, is very onto the farm chic aesthetic. So I feel like people tend to gravitate towards that. And when I do branding with them, I try to gravitate away from that because it's a little bit different. And it tends to stick out a little bit more if it doesn't look like a farm chic cafe. Not that there's anything wrong with that. I love those. Um, and then finding the overlap between some of those ideas. So that might look like if we have a snack brand and we want it to be rebellious, how do those things work together? Is there a way they work together? Um, sometimes there isn't. And that's also part of the process. Um, and then another big part that I always emphasize, and I don't think people realize is part of the process, is getting bored with the process in this beginning phase. Because you're just trying to get ideas out, and it starts to feel monotonous. And it kind of should, because at that point, you can either say, I'm starting to feel like this is done, and that's why I'm getting bored. Or I'm getting bored because the ideas aren't interesting anymore. Um, and that's a point where you have to kind of rehash whether you need to keep going or not. And something that I didn't realize would be a big part of the process and creative part of the process is venting emotions and allowing people in conversations to vent emotions. Uh, for instance, talking about people's brands, especially small business owners, get very emotional about their story that's involved with that. And not that their customer does not care about that, but it's hard to connect those two things sometimes. Because what the owner wants and considers important is not always what the con consumer or customer wants. Um, and a lot of times what I find, especially in larger teams, if you're coming up with logo ideas or very things that people consider personal, so stylistic choices, uh, solutions to problems that they think they solve, you'll start seeing that people have internalized certain beliefs that come out in those solutions. Um, I'm trying to think of a good example. I think there's one coming up, so I should be able to bring that in. OK. Good example um, of emotions being brought into the process. So Regional is a local nonprofit that works with climate change and kind of working with local companies to work around how we can provide a better future and avoid climate change problems. So they just recently had an event for Earth Day, and we were trying to come up with some branding, illustration to represent the event. We had a couple meetings together, and we had talked a lot about what the event was and what it would become. And there was this whole idea that we had created about it. And then we were trying to bring that all down. And as someone who thinks visually, 
I got really caught up in all the like jargon and marketing parts that we were trying to talk to. And eventually, one of the people that was in charge, Eric, we were talking, just having a cup of coffee, and he was like, you know, this is a really cool video. I want to show you this video. And this kind of was something that I thought spoke a lot more to the world he wanted to create. Oh, there is sound. You're right, Zach. So this was Dear a lot Alice, more interesting to me. This place is yours now. It's a handful, but nothing worth doing is easy. The land is more than just dirt. If you look after it, it will feed you forever. You're a smart one. I know you'll be okay come rain or shine. And remember, a business is only as good as its people. So treat them well. Our job is to plant seeds so our grandkids get to enjoy the fruit. So, eat well, Alice, and keep planting those seeds. Because how we eat today feeds tomorrow. So I really loved that video because it did a lot more for me than like three or four meetings did um, and brought an idea to life. So store that in the back of your head. It'll come later in another part of the process. Another example of some techniques that I use uh, at this part in the process is word maps, kind of getting ideas out and seeing how they connect. So this is for Bad Garden, which is a snack company that's going to be coming into Lancaster. Um, and they kind of want this rebellious, healthy attitude going on. So we had them come up with some ideas of what that meant to them, why they came up with that name, um, what it meant to them, and breaking it down. And then I took more of a visual aspect in saying, like, OK, if we want a rebellious feel, what colors does that feel like? Um, what fonts? Uh, what doodles, what drawings, those kind of things. And that kind of just starts the process. After some ideation, we start to do some incubation. So letting the idea stew and entertaining the possibilities. So at this point, you can start eliminating things. Um, what I try to start doing is posing questions that start to constrain the idea. So what if this logo were in a uh, smaller format. That's a simple idea, but it might be as complicated as, OK, now the logo has to be put on shirts and packaging, so it has to change shapes and has to appear in different ways instead of just a stack or straight across. And now it has an illustration, so how does it pair with that illustration and still become readable from afar or something like that? Uh, and that's where you start encountering systematic problems. Um, so this is similar, I think, to web design of where you start coming into issues that are just purely systematic. And that's kind of helpful for me as someone who's in the abstract art part because it means I can immediately eliminate that solution and not have to deal with it. Sometimes I involve other people in this process. I say some other people because sometimes this can be really complicated. Like I was saying earlier, people's emotions sometimes get the better of them than being really uh, poignant with their thoughts and like what they want to solve as a problem. And then at this point, I just did this recently, is I got to the end of a branding process and they showed it to someone else and it didn't work for them anymore because their ideas about the company had changed. Uh, so you might have to restart. And that's a really frustrating part, I think, especially when you're emotionally tied to projects. But it's a part of the process and has to happen in order to get customers what they want and to make sure that everything is accurate. So kind of going off of that video, I started doing some illustrations for the regional event. Uh, I actually started on this right hand side, which was all on computer, um, which takes me a lot longer than drawing. 
So it took me like a whole day and then I had this whole thing and I was like, this is really cold and abstract. Um, so then I did something on the left, the middle one, that started to come to life a little bit more and have a little bit more flavor to it. Um, and then I have the final version later on. But you can kind of see in this that it takes me a lot longer uh, than one might expect. I think a lot of times you see an end product, especially visual products, and you think, well, it looks like it was meant to be, so it probably just happened. And it's not always that way. One of the problems we faced with this was we got it out, and then they decided that they had themes to different sections of the event. So then this one in the middle didn't work because the events weren't the correct themes. So then we had to go back and kind of grid it out and make sure that the themes matched with different visual aspects. Uh, so this is that snack brand. So it started with some sketches. We were talking. Um, then we started doing some more digital sketches, kind of making them see what it would look like in different colors, different palettes. And then in this lower section, these are really tiny, sorry, um, kind of visualizing what those might start to look like on pieces out in the wild. So that's an important part. It was funny with this uh, company because the two, it was a husband and wife that are starting it. And they had never even, even though they were making snack bars, they had never actually pictured what the snack bar looked like. They were, I mean, they're focused on the process part of it. They were focused on what it tastes like, whether people like it or not, those kind of things. And like they saw it and they're like, oh, we've never actually thought of what it would look like on a shelf or like anything like that. So it was a really interesting thing to see. And the final part is execution. Uh, so this part I don't really have a lot of tips for, is just like you do your work and hopefully you're good at it. Um, <laughs> and like that, that's kind of what, what I say there is like if you're good at it, this is where if I don't even know, yeah, there's nothing to really describe that part of the process, I think. is That's where you're down in the weeds, just figuring things out. The one thing I will say is test it on your target audience a lot during that phase because I've found that I go so deeply into the weeds in my own little world of creating things that sometimes I forget what the original information was to solve. And so part of the process is finishing. And um, the regional event, we finished this, coming out with something that was a little more textured. Each of these sections represents a part of their event and different themes, so agriculture, solar energy, alternative home energies, uh, equity and inclusion, things like that. And then this is actually still a work in progress. I'm still working on this, but uh, the garden branding, coming up with something that was creative, looks a little bit rebellious, is fun, um, but is still easy to use for children and adults, something that everyone can kind of play with. So they're actually in the middle of trying to decide between, there's a couple other options, but I, these are the most succinct. And so a lot of you are probably not designers. So I wanted to kind of reel it back in and be like, what does this even mean to you? Um, I think in work is just remembering that visualization is an important part of conversations and how we communicate, and that it's a natural part of communication. And I think sometimes that gets lost in a very tech-heavy world where we're trying to communicate with people through text, mainly. Because um, I know that I struggle with that, so be wary of it. Whiteboard sessions, as hokey as it sounds, I think every time I pick up a marker and start drawing on a whiteboard, people are like amazed. It's like they forget the whiteboard is in the room and they just forget how to do that kind of thing. Uh, and then using imagery, again, because we're visual creatures, we need things like mood boards and visual imagery. When I started my company, I did not realize how much people needed to see things before they could agree to it. Um, and it's just a very important part of the process. 
And I think in your everyday life, I find that journaling, meditation, and imagery really help me picture the world I want to live in tomorrow. Um, so I keep a lot of doodads and like, you know, Lego things and things near my desk. And I try to journal every day because I think it helps you internalize uh, visualized ideas and kind of bring those things together. So you're practicing visual and verbal things and being able to communicate well. And that's all I got. So does anyone have any questions? Yeah, that's a hard one because I think art, people tend to associate with you having a style, and I think design is completely different. So you probably shouldn't have a style because people might want something different. I would say it's just forcing yourself to do it. Yeah, like, and then sometimes if I'm in like a really big creative rut, I don't drink coffee. I'll drink a cup of coffee, and that tends to like overactivate my imagination. <laughs> I don't know if that's helpful though. <laughs> Go ahead. Do you have a list of killer apps you use to keep track of all this stuff? Oh. Um, Notion's really good. I'm sure a lot of people use Notion. I think the hard part is, and I've been finding this more recently, is just teaching all my clients to use all of this stuff is just as hard as keeping up to date with everything. Um, so keeping it simple. I don't think it really matters what app as long as you're keeping it simple enough that other people can use it. Yeah, I mean, Figma's really good for that, too. It's like, because you can collaborate and see what other people are doing. That's another thing, is like using the tools. I know that Figma wants it to be used that way sometimes, but I think that's one of the ways people don't use it as much, is like, yeah. Yeah. Or maybe you're in a spot where like you come to a dead end and you actually need to like go yeah, reinvigorate the process and start from a slightly different angle. Yeah. How what do you have like a, a methodology for like determining which of those two states you might be in? Because I've often found myself stuck thinking I'm in one but actually yeah. in the other. So this is gonna my instant one is budget, <laughs> <laughs> which sounds really cold. But also, I usually take a walk at that point and then like get out of the ideas. And usually, if there's, if there's something that I find interesting after that walk, like I'll come back to it or like go to sleep for a day and come back to the project and say, OK, actually, what if this thing was a little bit different? That's usually where I determine. Or if I feel more like, oh, I'm tired of this, like that tends to be the differentiator. Because I'm not going to get good work out of myself if I'm acting like, oh, I'm tired of it, you know? Like, uh, yeah. So, yeah, so actually, interestingly enough, one of those projects where we were uh, helping them visualize a solution was a team of engineers and the rest of the company and communication problems that were happening. Um, so I think the biggest thing is, I guess, taking a step back from it and being like, this is a conversation. We're trying to solve a problem together and like acknowledging that first. And then I guess the communication part is hard because you're both looking at it from completely different angles. So I think 
it's hard because you, like a lot of these things, I don't think of as like, you do this thing, you get this result. I think of it as you come in with this perspective first and you get a better result. So if you can get people to a perspective of hearing each other first and then listening, does that make sense? I think, I just don't, there's, I don't think there's like a, yeah, like a this plus this equals com good communication, yeah. 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 So I'm thinking of it, this is a good test of, <laughs> I'm thinking of it when I instantly think of that is, my first tests are usually like logo sizes and things like that. But for a dashboard, that's completely different. Um, I mean, I guess it just comes down to like testing it with as many people as possible. I think it's a numbers game. It's like just having more people testing it and then if you can get people that are outside of the system that you're working within or the like target customer who doesn't know how the process has been created to solve that problem. Does that make sense? <laughs> Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I guess I would say that's probably something where like in the contract that you're working with the company, there probably have to be like either hour, some kind of set check-ins where you're checking in with them and saying, okay, we've reached this, we're gonna need this. Or like putting something in the contract about responsibilities because that, I think that's a hard part too with either development or design is that people are using it, so it's important to make sure that it's being tested. And that's part of the process. Like, I have a lot of people who come to me and say, I want a website, just design it and go. And like, and they just want you no hands on at all. And you're like, well, I need to know, and I need you to test it, and I need you to read over it, because this is your company, and I don't know your company like you know it. Yeah. It completely depends on the customer. Some people come to it naturally, and that's, that's where I think the emotion part is important, is like being able to kind of tell, okay, they're getting frustrated, and let them work through the frustration, because that's part of the process sometimes. That's why I hired you to help you yeah. run through that journey. Yeah, and sometimes that frustration is what causes them to go to someone else, so you have to step in and be like, hey, it's all right, we'll figure it out, yeah, yeah. Yeah. I think you get, I used to work at a summer camp. So what I always go back to is like team building exercises because they're goofy and they get people out of their like brain. And like, so I, I always say like start doing silly things. Like the whiteboard thing I think works in a, in that setting because everyone's so, I feel like what I usually see happen is you start a meeting, everyone's pretty involved, right? And then they slowly get bored, they start doing this, and then they start like, I'm gonna start doing something on my computer, and that kind of causes disconnect and then it builds, so like getting them out of that environment. I mean, doing something as simple as like drawing on the board or, yeah, making them participate in a different way of just talking. It's like, yeah. <laughs> 